Do you therefore think that as we speak tonight, uh, war is inevitable? For the first time now, I think that war is probable. And how do you see it mapping out? I think that our major objective should be the destruction of Iraq's offensive capability. And I believe that we can achieve this objective at relatively small cost in, I hope, a relatively brief period of time. Earlier I spoke to the former American Secretary of State Henry Kissinger about the dangers of a wider Middle East conflict. I put it to him first that there was a serious risk of Israel joining such a conflict. Uh, at this point, uh, nobody can be for war. The dangers of war have to be balanced against the dangers of alternative causes. Uh, and at this moment, I, I don't believe that Israel will involve itself. And I believe that they recognize the danger of spreading the war and the U.S. opposition to any such idea. The difficulty, surely, is that you can never guarantee that, for example, holy places might become violated, that will upset the Shia population in Iran. There are all sorts of unknown factors, aren't there? Uh, there are all sorts of unknown factors in, uh, in war. There are also all sorts of unknown factors if, if this ends uh, with an arrangement in which Saddam Hussein seems to have prevailed over the assembled alliance. What do you think the, 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 the chances of that happening are? Well, the only possibility would be that if he makes an appeal to some Arab countries rather than the UN, indicating that he would leave Kuwait and turn uh, Kuwait over to a coalition of non-Desert Shield Arabs. Uh, that is a theoretical possibility. I don't, I'm not aware that anything like this is going on. Do you therefore think that as we speak tonight, uh, war is inevitable? I think war, uh, for the first time now, I think that war is probable. And how do you see it mapping out? I think that our major objective should be the destruction of Iraq's offensive capability. I would be very reluctant to see a major ground engagement. And I believe that we can achieve this objective at relatively small cost in, I hope, a relatively brief period of time. Constant reference is made to the United Nations, to the resolutions and to the international nature of the force gathered against Saddam Hussein. But in reality, of course, it is primarily an American force, isn't it? And British. I think there's, um, I mean, the, the greatest part is American, but I think the British contribution is significant. But is it international enough, really, to uh, affect the way that the Middle East will come together after such a war? The way, the way the Middle East will develop after the war will depend in part on the outcome, and it will depart in, depend in part on the diplomacy that follows it. Uh, the question that you're putting uh, might have been put in August, but after there are 400,000 Americans deployed, uh, it, uh, the outcome will be judged against the American commitment uh, one way or the other. But the difficulty after such a war, and a war in which America has had such a high profile, surely, is that uh, America will have become part of the equation in the Middle East, and that'll be a complicating feature, won't it? Uh, that will be a complicating feature, but if America now withdraws without having achieved its, its objectives or, or significant objectives, uh, all the friendly countries, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, even Turkey, uh, will be severely shaken uh, and uh, that has to be balanced against your consideration. And do you in the end think that what people have talked as a short sharp engagement is either possible or probable tonight? I, I, uh, I'm no military expert. Uh, I believe it is uh, both possible and probable. Has Henry Kissinger talking to me earlier from his office in New York.